To me, usually you'll see one of two things happen when it comes to the NFL draft. Either NFL teams will f place an emphasis or a focus on certain areas, and then college football will follow suit to provide the prospects to fill those needs, or the college football game will change and evolve, and the NFL has to adapt accordingly. See the use of spread quarterbacks in recent years as an example. Now, with an increased emphasis and focus on and importance of the tight end position in recent years, you would assume that college football will follow suit and provide better talent and better athletes and better prospects for the tight end position for this 2014 NFL draft. And that's just not simply the case. This is a very, very weak tight end class, in my opinion, with only one first-round prospect, and that's even a little bit shaky. The bottom line is, is this class is weak, and if guys like Ebron and Nicholas and Amaro and Austin Safarian Jenkins did not declare for this 2014 NFL draft, you'd be talking about this tight end class as one of the weakest in quite some time. Not a good class at all. Now, you can look at my tight end prospect rankings in the description box down below. I've got a total of 15 tight ends that I feel, in my opinion at least, are draftable for the 2014 NFL Draft. And then you see kind of where I rank them in terms of their overall draft stock. Now, right now I have Eric Ebron from UNC as the number one tight end in this class. I do think he'll end up being a top 10 or at the very worst a top 15 pick in this draft. And I understand that based off of his speed, off of his athleticism and his explosiveness that he brings to an increasingly important position. And the fact that this is a very weak class, sometimes what will happen is when you have that one prospect that's a little bit above the rest and that overall class is weak, it will really help his draft position because somebody's going to overreach it for him because they're going to say, ah, there's such a difference between guy number one and guy number two, three, and four that we have no choice but to overdraft this guy to make sure that we get an impact player at this position. So that's why I would be stunned if Ebron dropped out of the top 15. Frankly, at this point, I'd be stunned if Ebron wasn't one of the top 10 or 12 picks in this draft. Um, but I don't think he's that good of a player. I understand some of the Vernon Davis comparisons, and I see them. But I also see some of the inconsistencies that a Vernon Davis had coming out of Maryland, too. So I see the good comparisons, and I see the not-so-good comparisons, especially to early NFL Vernon Davis, who was a big tease and a big disappointment in a lot of ways. Um, in terms of the other tight ends, the other top tight ends in this class, you might be surprised to see me have Troy Nicholas from Notre Dame, number two. It's what I saw. I saw a well-rounded tight end that remind me somewhat of a Kyle Rudolph or a Tyler Eifert. Maybe not quite as good, but pretty close in that kind of image of the recent Notre Dame tight end. And with the success of guys like Rudolph and Eifert at the NFL level recently, I think, if anything, that should boost the draft stock of a Troy Nicholas a little bit. And when I watched him, this was a guy that can make some plays in the passing game. He's a little bit better athlete than he's given credit for. He's a nice physical red zone target, and he's very good as a blocker as well. That's why I have him graded as the number two tight end. You know, guys like Amaro and Austin Severian Jenkins, when I went and watched him, I thought it was going to be more impressive than I ultimately ended up being. I thought they were going to be a little bit more athletic than I ended up seeing. Now, in the case of Amaro, that's not to say that he's still not athletic. I thought he was going to just be more athletic than what I saw. But a guy that could line up outside, a guy that could line up in the slot, maybe you could do some stuff with him out of the backfield. I'm not sure if you would want to uh, use him as a pass catcher very much, um, lining up next to the offensive tackle. ASJ disappointed me in 2013. I was expecting a whole lot more. When you go back and watch his 2012 stuff, his 2012 footage is much better than his 2013 film. There's no question about that. Maybe that was the emphasis on Bishop Sankey and the Husky running game. Maybe it was just the fact that ASJ was bothered by injuries. I don't know what it was, but he just wasn't that impressive. And to me, I see a guy that could, in theory, be the best tight end out of this draft in three years. But I also see a guy that could be a tremendous bust. Now, in terms of the biggest boom or bust risk-reward prospect, I think it's easily Colt Lyrela from Oregon. This is a guy that can do all types of things, very reminiscent to me of a Jordan Reed, who was a third-round pick in last year's draft. This guy is an explosive weapon, and maybe right along with Ebron as the most explosive weapon in this draft class. The problem is, though, is that with all the skills that he brings to the table, he also brings a lot of baggage. Um, multiple, multiple driving offenses, has a suspended driver's license, cocaine arrest, quit on his team early in 2013. The guy brings a lot of baggage, looks very immature, presents himself as very immature. 
Uh, obviously can't stay out of trouble off the field. Now, that could be something that he's a young kid and he does some young kid dumb shit. And maybe as he grows and as he matures and he gets into an NFL environment, maybe he can mature and grow as a man and allow his skills to flourish at the NFL level. Or he ends up being in jail in a year or two and costing himself time and not ever really fulfilling the massive potential that he truly has. But I look at him and I see a guy that, hey, you know, come the third round, his talents are so good that you have to take a chance on Because let's face it, at the NFL level, not everybody's going to be a choir boy. It's the same thing in the working world. Not everybody you work with you're going to like. Not everybody that you work with is a choir boy. Not everybody's an angel. A lot of people do shit that they're not proud of. A lot of people do shit that you don't like, but that's away from the real world or from their job. And if they can still come to work and do their job and do it effectively, you put up with some of that other garbage. In the case of a Colt Lyrela, he might be that type of guy, maybe somewhat similar to a Travis Kells coming out of Cincinnati last year that the Kansas City Chiefs took in the third round. You know, with all the baggage he brings, he brings a lot of potential too. In terms of underrated prospects in this tight end class, you might say Crockett Gilmore from Colorado State. I actually like him more, it seems like, than a lot of others. I think he's one of those guys that is a fourth-round pick. pick you, excuse me, you could bring him in, and he could be a number two tight end at the very least. A guy like Richard Rodgers from California. You know, the Cal Bears had a very bad year in 2013, and maybe Richard Rodgers got kind of lost in the shuffle a little bit, but he showed me some flashes of being a versatile weapon as a tight end. Uh, another guy that's really under the radar to me is a Rob Blanchflower from a UMass. Played at a lower level of competition, <clears throat> excuse me, but again, in a tight end class that is very weak, you know, this is a guy in Blanche Flower that I think ends up getting drafted uh, because of the weakness of this class and because of the potential that he brings to the table. And I think he ends up going a little bit higher. And I think based off of what I saw of him out at UMass, I think he should go somewhere in the fifth round, you know. But again, if I'm talking about tight ends from UMass going in the fifth round, that tells you all you need to know about this tight end class. Now you can sit there and tell me down below in the comments once you look at the description and you see my prospect rankings, you can tell me what you think of my rankings. Am I way off base? Am I right on the money? Am I kind of so-so? Who do you think is going to be the biggest star out of this tight end class? Who do you think is going to be the biggest bust out of this tight end class? Who do you think is going to be the biggest surprise, either positive or negative, out of this 2014 tight end class? Let me know in the comments section down below.